What we're living through right now is part of the disease of the cultural revolution started before Barry was born. I think Barry was born when, 19... Does anyone know when he was born? I don't know how old he is. What year, 68, 67? I, when was Barry born? Barry was born during the... Huh? 61? 61. So Barry was born around the same time that the Cultural Revolution began in America. A cultural revolution begun by uh, Allen Ginsberg, Timothy Leary, and I would say Bella Abzug, a, 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 a group that you could never find in, in hell itself to do more damage to a nation. And they were all such silk-smooth salesmen. One pushed rampant sex with animals. The other one pushed rampant drug use, mainly LSD. And the other one, God knows uh, what he pushed. No, there was a lawyer involved. So I'm sorry, there was a lawyer in the triumvirate that I'm thinking of. Uh, it would be four. It would be four. There was a lawyer. And the lawyer was a once respectable lawyer who went on the freedom buses to the south with the hippies and had so much sex with the hippie girls that he became a crazy left-wing fanatic. I forget his name. I don't know who he is. I, I don't know what his name is. I forget. But he was one of the people who just started the cultural revolution and almost uh, and led to where we are today is what I'm saying. I don't remember the lawyer's name. I'm not thinking of Alan Dershowitz. In my opinion, Alan Dershowitz is worse than him, but that that's separate. Uh, this lawyer, who went on the freedom rides, as I say, became a convert to communism, liberalism, anything for the uh, the free stuff he was getting on the bus. Patchouli oil is very addictive, and uh, it's a very powerful, has a powerful aroma, and apparently it went to his brain and overpowered his thinking. And as a result of Timothy Leary pushing drugs... This lawyer uh, pushing whatever he pushed, uh, a, 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 let's say, diminution of the law and the Constitution. Bella Abzug pushing so-called women's rights and uh, Allen Ginsberg pushing sex with animals and children. We now have what we are faced with, a cultural revolution. In its in, it's not in, in its infancy anymore. We are in its... Where are we with this cultural revolution? That is the question. My friends, that is the question. How far have we come in this cultural revolution? And how far will we go on this road of Obama or this road that Obama has taken us on? He didn't start it, but he was put in by the radical left to push it as far as he could, to push it as far as he could along the lines of Mao Zedong's China. And that is the model. I told you I'm reading two gigantic biographies. Ryan, could you bring them to me now? They're over on that table. Uh, they're, they're very important. They're not my books. I'm not pushing my books. <laughs> I want you to hear about two books to show you how smart I am. The big fat books over there by the women on Mao's China one with the hat. and They're, they're both by brilliant Chinese women. They're so important. I don't expect you to go out and buy them. They're both out of print. But they were my bedtime reading over the holidays. One is called... The Unknown Story Mao by Yung Chang, author of Wild Swans. And the other is Wild Swans, Three Daughters of China by Yung Chang. She actually lived through China's uh, cultural revolution. She grew up in China's communist elite. And she was living in a world of privilege. And she worked in the Red Guards. And then she turned against the tyranny of Mao. And she tells the story of the Cultural Revolution, in which her own parents were denounced, tormented, and sent to labor camps far from the luxuries of the homes that they had known. A father who stood up to Mao Zedong, and remember, he was a part of the communist hierarchy, but he eventually had enough with this crazy madman, Mao Zedong. His father stood up to Mao and was driven insane and hounded to death. She was exiled to the edge of the Himalayas as a teenager. And she worked as a peasant and a barefoot doctor. I'm reading this to you because you think it can't happen here. I'm reading this to you because you think that we're immune, because we're protected by a constitution. But I think you should understand that there is a man in the White House who, th who, who, who shreds the constitution one page at a time. In every way he can, him and his psychotic band of gangsters do everything they can to undermine every amendment to the Constitution. And as I've evidenced to you today, Loretta Lynch, who we had by his side today, our Attorney General, the very same Loretta Lynch who threatened to take away and imprison 
those of us who engaged in any kind of speech that she felt was, quote, edging towards violence. She didn't say violence speech. She didn't say violence speech. She said any speech which edges towards violence would be prosecuted to the full extent of the law because she wanted to protect the dear Muslims in America from the evil non-Muslims in America. My God, how many prayer rugs there must be in that White House. How many secret prayer rooms there must be somewhere in that White House is what some people are saying here and there. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-BUY-CO. <laughs> And yes, it will be hard. And it won't happen overnight. It won't happen during this Congress. It won't happen during my presidency. But a lot of things don't happen overnight. The woman's right to vote didn't happen overnight. The liberation of African Americans didn't happen overnight. The LGBT rights, that was decades worth of work. So just because it's hard, that's no excuse not to try. That's right. Right on. Right on. All the power to the sheeple. Look at Chairman Mao's long march. What a role model he was. Imagine marching across a land as large as China. That wasn't easy. That was hard. He did it. Took him a long time, but he did it. Didn't happen overnight, but he did it. And look at the great results of the Cultural Revolution. And we can have the same thing here. We can have the same thing here. You know, I noticed he's going now into the uh, Michelle Whisper game. She was the original whisperer. You've heard of horse whispers, of course, and dog whispers. I would call uh, Michelle Obama was the original liberal whisperer. Because as she gave speeches, she would go down into the whisper. He's picked it up. It's from two weeks in Hawaii with her, I think. Normally, he doesn't go into the whisper. He looked crazy and deranged to me. I watched the speech. I said, a madman. The eyes. They're demonic. I emailed people. I said, are you watching the demonic eyes? I saw the eyes of a madman. Am I wrong in this? They change when he does these things. You notice when he's slurping on a slurpee in Hawaii and relaxed or at Martha's Vineyard with the millionaires and billionaires that he hates? His eyes don't look as demonic. When he's walking around with the girls slurping on a cone, he looks like a normal guy. And yet when he gets and he digs down into the blood of the Constitution, his eyes change. And there's this uh, different look comes over him. Anyway, it's one man's observations. Be here or be nowhere. One more huge hour. Sorry you have to leave me. I know how bad it is. I know how hard it is. Contrary to the claims of what some gun rights proponents have suggested, this hasn't been the first step in some slippery slope to mass confiscation, contrary to claims of some presidential candidates apparently before this meeting. <laughs> this is not a plot to uh, take away everybody's guns. Okay. You so the sociopath tells us it's not a plot. Not at all. The same sociopath told us that we all have a right to the First Amendment. Uh, but, well, if... Your speech edges towards violence about Muslims. Why then Loretta Lynch will bring the full weight of the federal law against you? Same way with Count Obamula, a man who drinks the blood of the Constitution one sip at a time. Now, if he is what he is doing makes sense, then why doesn't he go through Congress? In other words, he's not allowed to make law. He cannot make law. Do you understand that that's the nature of our governmental system or not? He's abusing the executive order power. Article 1, Article 2 of the U.S. Constitution, the model for which our government exists, gives all legislative powers in Congress and consigns the power of legislative execution to the president. A civics lesson that Barry from Honolulu ignored while he was high at Columbia. The executive branch has made a habit of bypassing the legislative process. Why? Because he's a narcissistic maniac. He acts beyond his delineated authority. 
He promotes his big government agenda. He overrides and violates Congress's constitutional oversight of checks and balances. There's a legislative branch, an executive branch. You know that. He's not a leader. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me. Pardon me. I mean, a man has to sneeze after two and a half hours of radio. That's not so bad. That's not too much to ask of you, is it? Am I allowed to sneeze here and again? After all, I took a new supplement today. I took uh, apple cider vinegar. And all it did was make me... No, I just ate a date. That's why I sneezed. I must be allergic to the pollen in the date or something. So we're talking about very serious stuff. And many of you are afraid it is a slippery slope. Because we know this man is a maniac, a power maniac. Let's say a power mad maniac. Let's put it to you that way. Now, I began the show with a story about how guns saved 20,000 Jews from extermination by the Nazis in World War II. And I gave you an example of the Bielski brothers, which became uh, the, the basis of a movie called Defiance with Daniel Craig. And as I studied the book by the Bielskis, they were simple farmers in the Ukraine. Got along with their neighbors, Christian neighbors. They were all friendly for hundreds of years. The families knew each other. No one killed each other. And then along came Nazi Germany. And the Jews were picked on, and their parents and two brothers were killed in the ghetto. And they fled into the forest, these three brothers, and established a partisan group. And I read their book. The man, by the way, not only survived the war, but he helped save 20,000 Jews from extermination by the Nazis. The point of the story is that the first thing he wanted to get his hands on as he fled into the forest were guns. Guns! 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 Guns save lives. Guns save lives, which is why people want them. See, if what Obama was doing was so widely accepted, there wouldn't be controversial at all. Why do you think so many of us oppose what he's doing? Because we are the legal gun owners, and we oppose what he's doing. You don't hear an outcry from the gangs, do you? Have you seen any riots outside Baltimore or Ferguson from the gangbangers who were anti-police? Have you seen them rioting about this? They ain't said nothing. They ain't said anything about gun control because they're not, they're not going to be affected by it. You think they're going to go to a psychiatrist? You think so? You think a psychiatrist is going to report a gang uh, uh, as a danger to our society, take the gun away? No. See, it's we, the middle class, who are in the sights of this crazed administration, which is why he targets all of his madness towards the middle class. We are his enemy. We are the enemy of the Democrat Party itself. We in the white middle class in particular, I must say, that is a member of the white middle class, we are the target of this Democrat, socialist, Islamist juggernaut. Shall I say it any more clearly than I just did? Because it ties right into the 2016 election. I'll say it again in case you missed it. If you were to do, as I do for a living, analyze the president's actions and the actions of his minions, you'll see that virtually everything this man does is aimed at the white middle class. When I say aimed at, I mean taking away from us to give to others. Whether it's taking away money to fund illegal aliens or taking away money uh, to fund one program or another that is not going to benefit us in any way, it's always aimed at us. And it's aimed at us with executive actions or skirting the law or creating law. And it's aimed at the white middle class. In essence, you could say that this is a racial thing that's going on, and you wouldn't be wrong. But many of you are afraid to say it because you're afraid to be called you-know-what. You've been so brainwashed that you can't even see what's happening to you. But he makes it very clear who his target is. He didn't get up today and say that the gun violence in America has reached a critical mass, and today I'm using an executive action to order that the, the governors of the states of Maryland and Missouri use the National Guard to go into housing projects where there is a proliferation of gun violence and go door to door and take away any illegal guns and arrest anyone who has them. We're going to give everyone in these housing projects 24 hours to turn their guns in. If they don't, the doors will be broken down. We will seize the guns and we'll arrest the people in that house. How would you like that? Would you think there'd be an outcry today? You wouldn't hear an outcry today, would you? Well, you would from me. I would say you're violating the Constitution of those people in the housing projects. And most of them don't have guns. They're not violent. So I'd be one of those people to stand up for them. But you don't know that. But that's not what he did today. He said something else. It was a very minor group of things he suggested. 
taken separately and even together, it doesn't